Hey folks, Sam here. This is a kind of a rebuttal or a follow-up to um, my video yesterday. And uh, I don't know how long I'm gonna do these videos, but uh, they make me feel better, I'll tell you that. So at least I can talk to people and express my views. Um, that being said, after this video, I'm not even gonna respond to the libtards. I'm not even going to get in a debate over guns and freedoms and rights and everything else. I'm going to give you my opinion, um, and most of you will agree because it's common sense. And then we have the others that are going to disagree, and I've realized most of you are just a waste of my time or my energy or my thoughts because you're never going to get it. So, on to the rebuttal. Um, here it is. I got some people, most of you guys were pretty good about what I said, and you, you kind of backed me up with what I said, and you don't have to agree with everything I say. I, I mean, like I said, I'm just an overbearing uh, prick sometimes, so it is what it is. But here you go. I still hear that America, this is the best part. When people from other countries comment on my stuff, they say, you Americans are arrogant or you Americans have a gun problem or you Americans have this problem I would say 99% of them people have never been here so again it's just like a vegan telling me he wants to kill me because I eat meat and I'm a fat bastard it's same thing as a somebody from a country um, in Europe or whatever England saying Americans have gun problems you dumb sons of bitches have never been here. You don't even have a clue who we are. All you do is get your information off of social media and off the internet. Um, but it's kind of funny. I had a guy from Canada tell me we had a gun problem. And Canada doesn't have this problem because they took these kind of weapons away from people. You know, in Canada, they can't even own a BB gun that shoots as powerful as the ones I use to kill a coon. You can't own one of them in Canada. That's common sense gun laws right there, boy, let me tell you. Because we have a BB gun problem in Canada. So, you know, you guys, uh, that's what happens <clears throat> when you agree to what is called a common sense gun law. Uh, you know, we can all agree that this guy in Florida shouldn't have had a gun. But it, it really wasn't the law's problems. That was the FBI's problems. Because guess what? You go and you buy a gun. I've done this. This is a fact. They take all my information down. They call it in to a number. And I believe these numbers are they're run by the state, but it's still an FBI, uh, Interpol type, I don't know, but it's all. But anyways, this guy in Florida bought a gun, and the, the illegal gun store called it up. And the FBI background check said, yeah, give him a gun. I'm like... Let's see the problem in that. I have bought a gun and over some glitch or them being busy or something else, uh, I didn't get the call back and I had to come back 24 hours later to pick that gun up. And I'm, well, probably a radical. But legally, I can own a gun in the United States. In fact, I've been trained to use what people call assault weapons. Um, I've been trained to use what is a real assault weapon, a squad automatic weapon, fully automatic. I've been trained on a 50 caliber machine gun, and I've been trained on an M16. So by all rights, I'm the guy that you guys are trying to take a gun away, and all your stupid ass comments, I can blow out of the water. But anyways, so... It, the FBI dropped the ball. They let this guy pick up that gun. They could have said, no, he can't have that gun, um, And which, which happens to people. It's happened to people that I know over something that was found in a background check, and it was always a screw-up. Um, they couldn't get a gun, and they had to go, and they had to get that cleared up. This guy didn't have to do shit. So the FBI dropped the ball, not gun laws, just so everybody got that clear. So... Um, that's that whole ordeal. Uh, you know, to say that we should outlaw automatic weapons or uh, assault weapons and M an AR-15 um, is crazy. Uh, because I will do a video 
where I can do a hell of a lot more damage with a 12 gauge shotgun and load it just as fast. Not just as fast, but I can load it fast enough where I could have probably killed more than 50 people in that place and turned it into a severe bloodbath with a 12 gauge shotgun. So if you don't know about guns, zip it. You don't know shit. You're just talking out your ass. And then these people, I mean, we had this guy, this reporter, he went and shot his, uh, shot an AR-15 and he said that it was loud like a bomb and uh, that he had temporary PTSD. Now listen, me as a guy who shot 50 caliber machine guns, I have shot M16s and I have shot AR-15s and a lot of other weapons. You know, uh, well, Maybe I got PTSD. Mine's probably permanent because I did more than that guy did. But I look at that like, holy shit, are you kidding me? This guy is like the biggest pussy of all pussies. But the problem is there's a bunch of dumbass libtards that believe that shit. And, and that's where we're at, you know. Uh, I don't even know what to say. You know, here's the bottom line. Really, we got fat people, we still, uh, we don't outlaw McDonald's. We have forest fires, we don't outlaw matches. Um, we have people that kill people with guns. I mean, here, look in Chicago. Uh, they have, they don't have a gun problem. They have a thug problem. They have gangs killing each other, the murder rate. This is Obama's hometown. The murder rate is unbelievable, and they have common sense gun laws. But that's Indiana's fault, that all of that's... You know, there's one thing our good our president's good at. That's his pushing the blame. Um, so now let's move on to President Obama. He came out yesterday, made a big speech on how he was more pissed off at Donald Trump and more pissed off at the American people than he was at that shooter in Florida. First of all, let me tell you something. Obama, you're probably never going to see this, but I'm going to tell you this. My mama don't talk to me like you talk to the American people. And, uh, and if my mom did, I would sit there and listen. But you, you deserve a good bitch slapping. So don't, don't preach to me when you don't know shit. You've never been in the military. You've never done anything that has been worth a rat's ass in your entire lifetime. You, my friend, somehow became, you got voted, you became the president of the United States. Hats off to you. You're pretty smart. You're about as smart as them goat humpers we have over there in uh, the Middle East that are uh, blowing shit up and killing people right here in my, in my country. It's not your country. You're a world leader. You've said it a million times. You're a world leader. You know what? The world that didn't elect you for shit. You just made yourself a world leader. There's nothing pisses me off more than the, the world leaders are meeting. Who the, who the hell elected anybody a world leader. You are the president of the United States and your ass should be taking care of the United States. Your people that elected you should come first. You should be uh, understand that you have a bunch of pissed off Americans. Even the libtards are pissed off. They're pissed off at what happened, but they don't know how to direct their anger. So they look to you as their leader and then you come out with this bullshit of, well, if I called them Islamic terrorists, would that made the Florida shooting not happen? Then you do this long pause, like you're, you're scolding us, you know, go in the corner and think about that. Well, you know what? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. But what it would do is one thing you are afraid of. It would unite this country. Back in 9-11, when Al-Qaeda took planes with box cutters and forced pilots and flew planes into the World Trade Center and into the Pentagon and into a field in Pennsylvania, that united this country. That was Muslims, that was redneck Americans, that was city folks, that was everybody. We flew our flags high, we were united. Why? Because we were at war with Al Qaeda. We hunted Al Qaeda. You, my friend, don't put a title to them. You say ISIS. Is that the name? Are we at war with ISIS? So when when they so you have to tell us this guy that shot these people up in Florida, Obama, was he ISIS? 
Just tell me. Give them a name. You say Islamic terrorism, but we need a name. As an American people, we need a name. When we fought the Japanese, we were fighting kamikazes. When we fought Germany, we were fighting the Nazis. You're afraid because you're smart. You're not afraid. You're smart. And you know that if you unite this country, they will not follow you because you are part of the problem. If you unite this country, they will go after ISIS or Al-Qaeda or whatever, Islamic terrorism, whatever. That's why you're afraid to say anything. You're afraid to give them a name. You say, if we give them a name, that just gives more power to radicalizing them. How about this for a name? Pissed off Americans. You don't want to bomb them over there in hospitals and in, in churches and wherever. You don't want to fight the enemy. You want to be an offensive force because you're afraid that it's going to radicalize them. Dude, you need to wake up. It is radicalizing America. They're coming here. They're doing the things that you don't want to do. And they are, they are recruiting more Americans every single day. Hell, now you got the gay lesbian community Three quarters of them just gave you the big finger and told you to go F yourself. They're electing Trump. Why? Because they finally realized the Muslim, the, the Islamic religion does not embrace homosexuality. The Christian religion doesn't embrace homosexuality, but they're starting to deal with it. You know, I don't have an opinion on homosexuality unless you try to rub up against me and think I'm a queer, then I'm going to smack you. But if you go on with your life, just like I go on with my life, there ain't going to be no problems. But that's what you're afraid of, Obama. You're afraid if you give them a title, if you give them a name, then people like me are going to know what we're fighting. And you don't want that. It's much easier to be a world leader when your country's all effed up and fighting amongst themselves. Are you proud of that? I hope you're not.